It's a really cool link from, uh, you know, putting on these music nights at King Eddie's every month. The boss that works there, the manager, Paul. Yeah. All right, Paul. Um, he he sends me links for like other acts that he knows because he bands Aww. from different places around the country. He sent me a link to Sally Fox's music. I've seen her play with a band. I've seen her do stuff on her own. She's done like yes, a duo for, for So Far Cape Town, mm. and then she's done Balcony TV in South Africa as well. All right. So I had a chat with her and I said that you know I really liked her stuff and that we could definitely get her down to a studio and get her featured on Flat Fifty TV and maybe get her a few gigs and, and yeah. etc. So yeah. So not only do we just get to like showcase really cool acts in King Eddie's but I also find new acts that I'm really excited about through doing nights there you know yeah obviously through like people that work there or just Paul giving me links like that so we're gonna go now and pick Sally Fox up from where she lives yes. and uh, take her to the studio oh it's our so first time really having fun. a guest in there yeah yeah exactly Aww. and having an interview with her and then we're all gonna just have a fun jam together and try and write some songs so wow. it is quite a long day of musical uh, activities. My head is explode. I know, yeah. So people are basically like free to leave whenever they like. What's the studio called? A studio that I spoke about in episode one where Dish Tangent uh, uh, <gasps> rehearse above the boxing gym. This is it? This is it. Oh my so god. So it's called Reason Studios, like recording something new studios. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Been there before. And, is um, it going to be like boxes everywhere? So? Well, uh, usually when it's open, there would be. But oh. today, because it's Sunday, it's oh, closed, we won't see any. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to what track she's going to be playing off her new album. And then hopefully we can record them with Del in, in uh, RSN Studios. That, um, it'll just be us there, you know, you, me, Del, Sani, until the hopeful Joy guys arrive later on. Oh, Christmas tree. Aww. I don't know if I love this time of year, to be honest. I'm a bit of a Grinch. I'm a Grinch too, don't worry about it. Really I got bothered. asked on the radio this morning. Not oh, you know, what's your favourite Christmas song? And I was like, thinking inside, none of them. Yeah. <laughs> The, the only Pogues one. fairy tale of New York. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, right. It's, yeah. I've I've worked out that at most. This is at most. If I've got to oh, choose a Christmas song, yeah, it would be Elvis Presley's Blue Christmas. Oh, that's a good one. Because that's a cool it's still, one. yeah, right. Yeah. It's just about love it. Elvis check. Yeah. Bluesy check. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I like. Um, Tim Wheeler and uh, Emmy the Great. Tim Wheeler yeah. from Ash and Emmy oh. the Great, the singer songwriter, sort of like folk um, yeah. indie singer songwriter. They've made a Christmas song together called Zombie Christmas and it's actually a really cool song. Yeah. Obviously, it's like a rock indie song and the video is full of like zombies killing everybody at Christmas time. Oh my god. Uh, but it's, it, they've really nailed the Christmas sound in the chorus yeah. of that song. And um, but they say that they hate this time of year, you know. So it's like an anti-Christmas song. Oh my yeah. God, I love them. So it's really cool. So check that Christmas song out there. No problem, Tim Wheeler and Emmy the Great. <laughs> More views for you. <laughs> I don't know why I'm waiting here. <laughs> it's gonna be it's cold, you were too busy so singing. cold. Sorry, traffic. <laughs> I've got a new artist in the Picture House this um, month. I'm going to be. I mentioned last episode that we had Megan Waters in there with some illustrations. Yeah. So now her work's come down, and we. And then I mentioned Susanna Hatvani. I just mentioned her name in episode one. Yeah. So Susanna Hatvani's work is up there now, currently. This is what you were putting up today, BBC Institute. Um, well, that was a different oh. exhibition in Stratford Library. Oh. That's Ooh, for um, community groups in the area who are working with like artists with learning difficulties or adults. Oh learning my God, di that's difficulties. Amazing. So there's a really cool um, exhibition up in Stratford Library right now, guys, for LD Week, which I know has passed, but that was what that one was for. But the exhibition uh, in the Picture House is with the landlady of the Stag's Head Pub in Hoxton, <gasps> Susanna yes. Hatvani. So she's got some really cool illustration, paintings, graphicsy pieces. Um, so like uh, canvases and sort of framed paper. And they're all original handmade pieces. I'll chat to her about her work so we get a little bit of an interview with an artist and then I'll help her like take her work down and then Wayne's arriving. So I'm here with Susanna Hatvani, artist and landlady of the Stag's Head. <laughs> um, so where are you from Susanna originally? I'm originally from Hungary. Okay cool. I left Hungary about 10 years ago, uh -huh. maybe even more now because I had three master's degrees at the economy, didn't let me unfold my talents and studies. Yeah. So I've been traveling around for about 
maybe four years, five years, and I yeah. ended up in London. Uh huh. And it comes in the family as well. Mm -hmm. My mum, she's a successful painter. Yeah, you were saying your mum was an artist. <clears throat> That's so cool. Is she like a qualified artist and teaches? Uh, well, she wasn't at first. She taught herself, yeah. but she had a lot of exhibitions on. She was even exhibiting once in a national gallery mm -hmm. as like a conjoint exhibition. That's what it's quite a distinctive style, I would say. Oh, yeah. I would say it was definitely like a heavy illustration based mm -hmm. sort of graphics, color, and composition. I, um, I always. Semi abstract. I did always like to draw. Yes. And then the painting I just got into recently. So yeah. I've got loads of graphics. I used to like to do them, but only in like a very small format uh -huh. because here in London people don't have a lot of space. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, so I had to like limit my. So yeah, your artwork is dependent on the space you have to make it in, I guess. Yes, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's make another. Like, yeah. Kind of the same, but a bit different. They're almost like sort of dream and nightmare, aren't they? In a way. Very nice composition though, you know, like nice balance. It's very difficult for people to stop working on a piece and not know when to finish mm -hmm. because people want to keep working, keep working and then they ruin, ruin composition, yeah? Yeah, but I know But just the mean, fact I, that I there's had this problem. patches of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've never had this problem. But not, not really. It's just nice to leave like these patches, just when you decide to leave these patches of white yeah. and basically when you sort of squint and you feel like this is balanced. This feels like to I be feel honest, comfortable. I did not want to exhibit this painting. I didn't did like not? it. I thought I did not. Yes, and um, my husband. I think he told what, me too because I, he likes it. And this is what my so friends told me as well. Your husband made a good decision on this on this piece. <laughs> He's not my husband. Though. Well done. No, no, no. Of course, Beckham <laughs> isn't your husband. Although these two, they were like kind of planned. Like I had roughly the idea what I wanted yeah. to go with. These weren't at all. I was just smashing the paints on yeah. the canvas putting some texture in there and I left it and uh -huh. I didn't know what to make out of it so I just yeah. put it on top of the TV yeah. and I waited. You waited, <laughs> waited for some inspiration. <laughs> I waited for myself to see something in it. Yes. And then you did and sort then, of like a reflection and then I did see of a lake. some things. Yeah, there's something. quite a lot of detail. I like the way that um, whatever background you're putting on creates like an effect where the paint can't stick to it kind of thing you know and then I don't know whether you draw around that or not but it looks uh, it looks quite like purposeful doesn't it those two so yeah those two were planned yeah I like this one a lot it's because of the effect that you have on the background actually it's got a poem written by me on it oh it's got a poem in it's the background oh yeah and clearly on the yeah. back so that person can read it yeah cool and I really like that horse one as well I think it's a really nice sort of illustration of a horse head and the background colours work really well as well. This is, reminds me of Kill Bill for some reason. Yeah, me too. Like I just looks off. violent <laughs> with the um, colours sort of flashing across. That, that was like half plan and half the, the, the fishes and all that just yeah. came. And they're all um, handmade original pieces. All handmade original pieces, yeah, yeah. yes. And people can visit your website? Yes, they can do actually. It's www.susy. K A N N A dot W I X dot com slash home. Let's see if that's correct, yeah. shall we? <laughs> you see that. So, Susanna, you've been exhibiting your work here for the month of November. Yes, I have. And um, you had a little launch like uh, evening with your friends, and yes. that was fun. Yeah, that, that was, was nice. Fun. And maybe now, after doing this, you're going to look at doing more exhibitions around London. You've got a good body of work to do I, it. I would love to, to be honest. Yeah. And um, I would like to express my thank you <laughs> to you, Paul, mm. for giving me this amazing opportunity oh, to, to no exhibit worries. my work. For the first time in my life, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. And I think I gained a lot from your live drawing class as well. So I hope oh, you're going yes. to carry on in channel. Yeah, yeah, I'm really cool. I'm looking forward to uh, go and take part in it again. Yeah, yeah. so um, I run live drawing classes in the Stag's Head. And in 2019, we're going to keep those classes running. So I'll be posting up on the Flat 50 uh, profiles w when those dates are. So stay in tune for that. But uh, thank you very much, Susanna. And Thank you um, very much. I'll see you soon for more art. Yeah, definitely. Thank okay. you so much. Take Bob. it easy. Nice and um, Wayne Marahan's work is going up. And, and who he's... is Wayne? Wayne is a lovely Scottish man who I met a few years ago by doing exhibitions. He got in touch, wanted to put yeah. his work up. And uh, I've been putting, raffling off his work sometimes at Flat 50 Nights. So he does like really cool like Star Wars prints and like <gasps> David Bowie prints. The David Bowie that's in my house yes. is his. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. I love that. Okay, so uh, 
Susanna's just taken her artwork down. Like ships in the night, we now have Wayne Marahan. Danish, apparently. Oh, Danish. <laughs> Sounds very Scottish, though. Well, I sound very Scottish, but um, <laughs> my dad's Irish, so it comes from him, and apparently he tells me he's Danish. So oh, cool. Irish, Irish, Danish, Scottish. It's all Vikings. What a mix. Um, so, yeah, it's got this, these uh, awesome uh, pop art prints here of the, uh, the lovely Dolly. <laughs> Not giving away any secrets, Wayne. <laughs> um, you do sort of hand draw in a way. Oh, at some point in the process of this, right? Yeah, I hand draw it all because, well, because it's fun. Yeah. It's nice to sit and draw things. But then the process of colouring is not something that I'm fantastic at. And one mistake, and then it screws up all my sketches. Well, I kind of like the idea that it's a bit childlike because you're just colouring stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is. And you're always sort of. Um, uh, celebrating icons, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, you like know. you do a lot of uh, David Bowie. I've got one of them. I do a lot of David Bowie or Bowie, however we're pronouncing uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> so cool, though. A bit of Dolly for Christmas, you know. Yeah. So Wayne Marahan is going to be exhibiting here these pieces for the month of December, and you can follow Wayne on his Instagram, which is Wayne Did It, which is at Wayne Did It, and. Uh, is that it? Is that the, that's the most useful link? That is the most useful is link. Is there a, a website, Wayne Did It website? There is, there's waynedidit.com, but I don't update it that often. Okay, so there's waynedidit.com as well. Not that people are visiting websites that much these <laughs> exactly. days. They're too much like hard work, aren't they? It's a bit redundant, but it's nice to kind of have your own space on the web. Yeah, <laughs> old school. <laughs> yeah. Retro. If you want to come and swing by the Picture House Cinema in Stratford at any point, guys, come and watch a film. I recommend Bohemian Rhapsody and uh, check out Wayne's Dolly Parton pop art graphic prints. Come and buy them. It's a mystery how much they are. You'll have to get in touch with them to find out. <laughs> you know, it's a cool little um, arty space, that Picture House Cinema, isn't it? Because you've got the bar upstairs where you can do some acoustic music. Yeah. For exhibition launches, I sometimes put live music on in that bar area. But then also the Picture House let me run my London Youth Film Awards stuff there and I have kids come to the cinema and we and they get to watch their films and I host oh. like multi-school events with um, with primary schools. Yeah. And my friend Greg helps me host host these events. So I get to use the Picture House in loads of fun ways. I get to put music on there, I get to put artwork up there, yeah. and I get to put film events on there with kids. So yeah, it's a really cool cinema and venue in East London, I think. How did you, did they approach you? Did you approach them? Um, you... The one we were doing the film events, that was something where, you know, me and a few of my teacher friends, Greg and Dave, also had films with their kids. And, and, uh, and we wanted to do a trip where all our kids got to meet each other in one place and oh. watch their films. And then, and then based on that, I, I made London Youth Film Awards happen. Um, you know, turned it into an actual company. An actual thing. Oh yeah, my God. a community interest company. So it's a not for profit company. We get funding to do, like, I've done the zombie summer school film with um, Stratford Circus a few years ago. Um, oh, last summer, actually, I did that with them. Um, so yeah, so we get like funding to do different things, and then I put a Halloween event on with it where we sort of taught people how to do zombie makeup. But it's all sort of based on the working relationship with Picture House that, that things like that start to happen. Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, we're here to pick up um, Sandy Fox. Wait. Anywhere here? Anywhere, anywhere here, anywhere. I guess. It's in East London somewhere. Oh. Like, celebrating Hello. his life. Hi. Hello. 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 How are you? <laughs> yeah, so yes, it's like Sunny maybe already knows you a little bit because she's yeah, watched on the video. episode one. Oh, yeah. I loved so I guess it. she it's sort like of heard delicious. you chat for quite a while, you know. <laughs> I um, know, it was great. Oh, I, I really good. enjoyed watching it. Especially, oh, yeah, we've got, we've got Christmas stuff. Look. I know. We've got nowhere to hang this. Oh. <laughs> it wouldn't fit, oh, so that's why I've had enough. to put tinsel there. Okay, so Sunny, we're starting this new thing. Sorry to anybody we've interviewed on past episodes that haven't had a present, but we're giving people presents now for coming on the show. Oh, so that's you. a special. Well, it is the Christmas episode. Yeah. Should I open it? You yeah, can open, open it now. It. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you have to rip the box. They've sealed it quite well there, Vista Print. <gasps> right. Damn, that's cool. So you can drink your coffee. Yeah. Yeah. I love the. 
the, the way you cut to all the stills images. Oh yeah, did you really? Yeah. Oh really? Because we really were cool. like, oh, how's how are people gonna like respond to it? We didn't works know. so well. I really like oh. it. The feedback that we've got from people, like uh, uh, yeah. So last time it was like. We were like, oh no, we had the sat nav on. Because <laughs> so oh, sometimes yeah. it What's was sat -nav? like the, uh, the satellite turn, navigation. Turn, oh, oh, oh. Turn right. I, quite like, da, 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 da. I quite like those, those oh, things of stuff going wrong. <laughs> and we like, will make a note for future episodes like, turn that off, keep the windows closed because yeah. you can hear a motorbike like fly really? by. Like, I, I saw that. I saw, I, I saw that. I thought that was really funny. I think, it's, I think those things are really cool. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's the thing about London as well it's very saturated here there's just yeah. so many musicians and so many people so everyone's getting hit with these like hundreds of emails so you, you know you mm. probably yes, how do you an which ones do you answer mm. yeah. 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 Kate's only 20, oh, 21 me. years old um, <laughs> but I've been here for 10 years so um, I I know what it's like, I you know, know as yeah. somebody trying to get gigs and stuff. It's it can be quite tricky when you start out and you come across a lot of people who like it's super tricky. If you wanna <laughs> if you wanna play in a nice good venue in a good location, it might be like you sell the tickets and we'll give you like a penny for every one you sell or you know like, or like pay to play. You and, can bring a hundred people to the venue, we might give you twenty oh, pounds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, you do that maybe once or twice or something just to see what it's like, but there's not you people aren't gonna keep doing that. At no, the end of the day, no. a lot of people have, I've seen have actually given up music in London because they just don't want to get so fed up just, with it. So fed yeah. Like uh, there's always that element of there are a few things where obviously you have to be really good at what you do because you have to be you have to be able to play music and you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but there is always that element of like magic and lottery, which yes. is mm. yeah. yeah. But I was here. I was here four years ago in 2014 to do a tour okay. like a little tour for six weeks mm -hmm. right. but that was very short with your own, own music with my own music oh, did, wow. what did you uh, what venues did you play can you remember i played half moon putney yeah. um, i played a festival in tooting okay i played is this uh, that the festival in tooting was that on the green on the tooting tram festival oh yeah yeah yeah, I heard <laughs> yeah and then uh so a, 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 a place called like Underworld Underbelly or Underbelly under yes, at the bottom. I played there, yeah. I played there. Oh, uh, and then I played the Cock and Bull Festival, which was somewhere out in the oh, countryside. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. And I think I played one so, other one. So quite nice places actually, just to yeah. come for a little. Yeah, it was. Tour, it went like the really Half quick. Moon and the Underbelly, like they're uh, nice half little venues. always nice, isn't it? I, oh, I, it I, is. I, I like the Half Moon. I love half moon. Um, that's what apparently that's where Kate Bush did her first ever gig. Yeah, I heard that actually. There's a big picture of her. Yeah. I love Kate Bush. There's a big Me picture too. of her. It's cool now that we're we're going to so it's Kate's first time going to the studio and your first time, oh, really? Sally. So this is I'm like so a excited. quite a famous boxing gym in, in East London that has produced quite a lot of famous boxers. Ah, I think Pri Prince cool. Nassim Hamed used to uh, no train way. here. Frank Bruno used to train here, and then above it there's this um, studio which obviously Dishy Tangent used to rehearse. It's called like, Recording Something New Studios RSN. So yeah, we'll have oh, some oh. fun. Peacock's Gym, oh, yeah. Oh, Boxing Academy. That. Right, so really what cool. I'll do is I'll see where Dell is because I know Studios, Del's you can go into your left there yeah. and put your stuff down in here. Del! Hey. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Oh, what, 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 Thank goodness, they just yeah. came walking down the road. Heroes. Yeah, they were like my yeah, heroes. I was like, been oh. for the last few years. Yeah, awesome. They're like, it's okay, we've got a cut, come with us. Yeah, yeah. It's recording now. It's dangerous, all this recording stuff. Mm. Watch what you say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. We are rolling. We are rolling. Sally Fox, Flat 50 TV, episode two. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Shut that door. <laughs> Hello, so today I'm at RSN Studios in Canning Town and joining me today is the dynamic, the bluesy, the soulful Sunny Fox. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> it's a lot to live up to. Um, can you, um, thank you for joining me today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself in a nutshell? So, um, <laughs> where do you come from? Where are you based? Um, when did you start with the songwriting? 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. It's <laughs> not a question. Um, I uh, I was uh, I'm based in London mm-hmm. now. Um, I came more recently from Cape Town, uh, in South Africa. Yeah. And I started songwriting probably when I was about fifteen. Okay. Mid mid teens. Yeah. Piano. I started writing songs. Yeah. And what inspired that? Because you said earlier that you played the piano and guitar. Right? Yeah. I think I think my I think my mother wanted me to to have p- piano lessons because I think a lot of parents sort of do that with their yeah. kids. So I I I obviously started, uh, you know, working with an instrument, and then my Grandmother knew some family friend who wanted to store a really big, beautiful old piano from Zimbabwe. Wow. Um, and she was like, yeah, I can store your piano for you. Yeah. And she gave it to my, my parents and they put it in my room. <laughs> oh my God, in your room. Oh my God, that's <laughs> so we, amazing. Yeah, we stored it. So, so I just had this amazing piano in my room. So I think that's why I always just started just playing by ear mainly okay. and, and writing morbid songs that teenagers <laughs> do you know so that was your first instrument and then mm. the guitar came a bit later and then the guitar came some years later Ah, oh, okay <laughs> yeah yeah and that is now your preferred instrument to write with yeah yeah i i i, I um i definitely gravitate towards that more than the keys though i love i love piano as well it's so different yeah but because of a lot of my influences being sort of rock and okay. blues it 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 goes it yeah i find that as a vehicle to express myself musically the guitar is just like on yeah the so that brings me on to my next question actually so what would you say your influences are uh there's so many um there's so many because i've grown up listening to so much music um i really love even classical music i love jazz um yeah. the, the 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 main sort of ones that i go back to all the time are a mix of sort of uh, mm, well Led Zeppelin I, I, yes. love, I love a lot of that kind of 70s rock and roll like uh, Black Sabbath as well oh wow um, I love soul like a lot of um, kind of Sam Cooke and Etta James um, and then blues wise I've always loved um, John Lee Hooker yep. um, Howling Wolf I, I also love a lot of sort of Malian blues which is Ali Farkature. Oh my god amazing. Um, his son Vio Farkature. Yeah. Jazz and yeah. Fitzgerald. Mm-hmm. Um, th- those are kind of yeah and then PJ Harvey I've got into mm-hmm. in my later years. Yeah. Um, is that because you said that that people were comparing you to? Yeah, I've, I, yeah. yeah, I had I had for years. People would kind of that name would come up. Say, oh, you remind me a little bit. Aww. Your music a little bit of P J Harvey, and I was always like, I wonder who that is. I, I <laughs> so you had a little look. P J Harvey <laughs> yeah. man, or yeah. was, you know, like, <laughs> I didn't yeah. really know who it was. <laughs> and then I got into it. Uh, I, I got into her through my cousin when I came to play in London four years oh, ago. Right. He 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 was totally in love with her. And showed me a lot of her videos, and I was like, "Oh my god, this woman's is incredible!" Amazing. Yeah, she's so. What kind of venues and festivals have you played at? Any favourites or in in just anywhere, anywhere. in the world? Or because it's quite you're quite international. I'm I'm thinking. Oh, I've been I've been stuff. I've been to some some places. Um, amazing uh, festival in Sri Lanka. Um, yeah, Sri Lanka. <laughs> yeah, very very cool. Like uh, it's called the Colombo Jazz and Blues Festival. It yeah. happens in February, around February. Um, that was absolutely amazing. That the stage is kind of like it's it, it it happens in a hotel, which reminds me of a hotel in South Africa. It's yeah. called the Mount Nelson Hotel, which is like a really mm-hmm. old it, British colonial hotel in South Africa. Right. And now this is like an old colonial Portuguese hotel in Sri Lanka. Okay. Um, but it's, it's on, not Gold Face, is it? No. Yes, yes. Oh my god. Yes, it's oh that god. hotel. I've been there. Yes, okay, it's there. Oh my gosh, I'm there. And, and yes. then on the ocean. Yes, if oh you my go, god, yes. If you go out to I the spent st- a New Year's Eve there once. Yes, well, the stage <laughs> is there. Oh my god. On oh the my ocean. god, that's amazing. And it's hot, and there's just oh, this amazing beautiful. curry and fantastic just what an energy festival. and people and just yeah so that's definitely you know, that's definitely so one do of you my get asked to perform at a lot of jazz and blues festivals then well that that came about i i've i've played quite a lot of blues festivals um not so much jazz although you know we, if you're playing blues and you're playing kind of soul it kind of 
it yeah. bridges into into yeah. it completely you know connects to jazz yeah. as well so i'd love to play more more jazz festivals if they if they're if they're open to that <laughs> <laughs> and um, have you got any more gigs um coming up here in london yeah 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 i've got um i've got i'm playing uh the finsbury um yeah. on the 10th of okay. uh of december december okay and I'm playing uh, a little bar, very cool bar, um, in Camden called Spiritual Bar. Oh um, my god, that's amazing! Yeah. Oh um, yes, you're gonna be perfect for that. Yeah. Oh my god, that's oh, amazing! Wow. Um, Fourteenth. Okay. Um, and then I'm also gonna be playing uh, Boysdale. I'm gonna be opening for Jimmy Thomas. Oh my god, these are February. amazing gigs. Yeah, well and Jimmy Thomas is who yes. I went to Sri Lanka. Oh, we played as part okay. of the same show. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah. Wow, these are amazing gigs. And so and hopefully more. We're adding more yeah, yeah, as I, I go so. along. I so. Lots more. Great but gigs. It's December now and people are yeah, it's... getting a bit silly. <laughs> <laughs> silly season. <laughs> and so do you have any... So until your gigs, can we listen to your music online or buy it? Yeah. Buy it, buy it, buy it. Buy it, yes. <laughs> well, yes, you can... Um, you can buy CDs in South Africa. You can get the CDs at Musica. Mm-hmm. If you're in London, you can get some CDs from me. I can post them to people. Okay. I posted some CDs to someone in Wales the other day. Did you? Oh, yes. my God. <laughs> yeah, I posted all, all, all my albums. Um, that was very, very, very nice. And then, because um, the postal system is very reliable mm-hmm. here, which is very nice. It's not very reliable in South, in South <laughs> Africa. Okay. Um so and then you can obviously download mm-hmm. if you if because that's what everyone's doing yeah. these days. You can download my album on all the online platforms on okay. Spotify and iTunes, Google Play. Um, yeah. And where can we find all this information? So for all of your gigs and to buy your recordings. Okay. Your okay so the 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 gigs. The best place to go is my website. Yeah. Because that's where I post all my shows. Um, you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, but to kind of the websites, it's all you know. Um, Facebook and Instagram is always fluctuating and changing yeah, okay. and stuff. So, so the website's probably the best place to go for that. And, and your website is? It's www.sunnyfox.com. Oh, amazing! Yes. Well, thank you so much for speaking to me today. Um, I will add all the links to all of your social media, your website, and everything. Yeah. And <laughs> I can't wait to. You're about to do a live set for us now, and yes. I, I, I cannot Excited. wait. <laughs> cool. Okay, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Back to the studio. <laughs> Taller than me, I was taller than now Cause I was raptured and then I went Through the door, through the door All the way Say
Hi guys, if you enjoyed Flat 50 TV today, you can keep up to date with all future shows at Flat 50 Arts on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter. Until next time, Merry Christmas! Ho, 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 ho. <laughs>